Our next speaker is Yuri Lebedev. Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Welcome, Yuri. Yeah, so fails. It's quite hard to speak about fails after all this success here. Um, uh, I'll tell you something about the procedural games of our minds. Sadly, but you will forget half of the received information uh, in one hour, and uh, I'll tell you why at the end of my presentation, if I don't forget. When I, what, uh, when I wrote um, procedural tools for small projects and for myself, um, I thought I was good at this, uh, of course. Uh, then I started to write tools in studio for, with more than 100 artists, and I realized that I fail in most unexpected areas. And this is the story about uh, my fails, and uh, I hope you learn something uh, from them. Um, I will be talking about the next stuff. Uh, sorry for the baby part. I was preparing presentation with my uh, baby. <laughs> um, playing with Houdini by doing favorite job is amazing, uh, but uh, we have jobs because uh, the business works and to be um, successful uh, you have to know how to uh, how this business works and how to save money and uh, so on um, somebody knows what these three letters means me neither um, so uh, basically it's a minimal minimal viable product. It's what uh, I believe you have to deliver as fast as possible to the user to start uh, getting feedback and uh, doing real stuff and not what you think you have to do in your head. Um, I was never about communication. Uh, you can often see me standing somewhere next to the wall and listening to other uh, talking around. I'm sorry, uh, I was wrong. Uh, communication is very important. Uh, I hate the fact that uh, in our world we have to spend like the same amount of money for advertisement as uh, for the product itself. But it was a surprise for me that I bump into the same issue with my own tools. Um, as a 3D artist for more than 10 years, uh, as a, and uh, as a human being for 39 years, I know how interesting it could be to interact with people, especially with creative people. And uh, humans never stop to surprise me, and I have to more about uh, customers, uh, like the artists, the customers of my tools, to write better tools. Um, people are expensive, and that is why we can all be replaced by, by ChatGPT. Um, I didn't know my code for procedural tools have smells until I find out uh, how to smell the code. And this will be the last part of my presentation. Now about me. Uh, so as a classical artist, uh, yeah, my name is Yuri Lebedev, as you heard. As a classical artist, I know a lot about different stuff, but uh, I never have a chance to spend uh, magic 10,000 hours for some specific subject because it's so interesting to touch everything and uh, those everything is so many that uh, I want to try like a lot. And uh, uh, the same, for example, with Houdini. I met with it eight years ago, but uh, I wasn't super lucky to spend uh, all these years only with Houdini. Uh, I'm more like 3DS Max guy. Uh, I'm sorry for that too. Um, to become a technical artist, I walked a long path, starting um, as an engineer physicist. Uh, I created like real world physical materials and then measure, measure uh, to understand why did I create them. Um, but uh, I understand that uh, I hate measure physical properties, so I switched to 3D and tried maybe every field that could be tried, like I model it, render it, uh, simulate it, animate it, rig it, skin, whatever. And uh, of course, all these years I wanted to uh, be um, a CG supervisor. And uh, 
it happens that, uh, I don't know, maybe six years ago, I, I became a one and uh, I understand another fact about me, I hate working with people. So uh, now, before that, uh, I also start to develop game with my friends and dived into Unity engines, crashed the surface of Unreal Engine, and in the end I understand that uh, I like to write code and work with 3D, the killing combination for technical artists. So uh, right now I'm uh, um, in Ukrainian Frag Lab studio uh, where we are developing um, AAA uh, first paced uh, on shooter and um, during this war, and uh, here is 30 seconds of the clip uh, from this, uh, from this, uh, from our game, so you can understand uh, what are we doing uh, in Ukraine. can try it already um, if you want. Um, now back to my failures. So the first one, um, as a technical artist, we have to also solve uh, business problems. And I loved and I still love uh, to do interesting stuff uh, like experiment, like some procedural stuff. And when I wrote tools for myself, uh, it was just fun to create the tool itself and to try new features in Houdini. Um, but, and my main priority was um, like to add fancy line to my CV, like uh, I'm using Houdini for some, something, or I don't know, create a gorgeous picture and put it on our station. But then uh, I started to work as uh, part of the big team and I understand that this is uh, not uh, what the business wants from me. So uh, priorities uh, never um, was around uh, what I did before. Like for example, if I um, needed to create a table like before, I just start to create a procedural tool. I need only one table, but I could spend a week or a month for digging into uh, procedural stuff to create uh, the tool for procedural generation of tables. But uh, this is not a case when uh, uh, I'm a part uh, of a studio. And uh, another stuff that uh, like doesn't work uh, good, it's uh, when you want to create something procedural, but at the same time uh, have as much as uh, artistic control as you want. Um, especially in adequate time. Uh, we have an example when uh, because of artistic control, uh, one tool developed for one year and uh, some studios uh, even don't live so long. Um, of course, uh, I have to know like how to choose the right microscope to hammer nails. And uh, it's very easy if you, I create tools in Houdini and then use those tools by myself in Houdini because I know myself very good, so uh, no, nothing could uh, be wrong. But if I have to create tools for um, in pipeline where the 3ds Max uh, is the main tool, then it's become very um, dangerous or very, like the complexity of tool increase exponentially. And I have to uh, like remember about that. Of course, uh, um, I can use Houdini engine under the hood and uh, it's always faster to produce a tool with Houdini engine. But then when I try to uh, mimic 3ds Max uh, tools, because artists uh, know only 3ds Max and they uh, are scary of uh, Houdini, they have to use uh, my Houdini tools as native 3ds Max tools. This is very complicated and uh, I could spend really much more time than uh, doing uh, native tools. Uh, so uh, to choose um, the right size of microscope, I have to like answer 
with questions like maybe I can choose uh, not uh, Houdini because I love it, but maybe something, I don't know, uh, like a standalone tool because uh, if artist doesn't need to launch any 3D application, uh, I can generate stuff uh, with uh, some tool that I wrote uh, on my own and then I don't depend on something on new version and uh, new, I don't know, Python version and, and so on. And then leads, uh, this leads to the next fail about losing time perspective. I like to create tools that can do everything. Uh, but uh, uh, I have to remember that uh, every option that I add increase the complexity of the tool and then artists say, oh my God, it's so complex. I, I want to do everything uh, as I uh, get used to and uh, never touch um, uh, my tools uh, ever. And uh, also, plans are changing so fast and all those uh, features that I will add for maybe future use, uh, they could be just abandoned because uh, uh, like time pass uh, and uh, priorities changes and uh, I spent uh, time for the tool but uh, nobody uses all those features because uh, the tool is not needed anymore. And uh, this leads to another problem that uh, the faster I find out um, what artists want from my tool, the faster I can really do what they uh, really want and not what in task uh, uh, description is. Um, so for example, uh, you will be surprised how often the initial plan breaks after the first working prototype. For example, I uh, create a one button that already works, I give to an uh, artist and uh, he said, it's okay, it's, it's enough for me. And uh, uh, all my dreams about like uh, trying new stuff uh, and adding like some uh, super cool features just shatter it at that moment. Uh, but trap, I fulfill my mission, I save time and money for the company and artists already can use the tool. Uh, of course, there is two approaches to this uh, minimal viable product uh, and uh, the one approach is mine and the other approach is wrong. And uh, I mean, uh, like, at first I really was afraid to give in something very raw to artists, but then I understand that this is the only chance to really uh, do the right stuff. And the other approach is uh, slow programming. Uh, it's uh, like the modern uh, philo philosophy in um, game, not the game developer, in a software developer, where you first think, you um, uh, you trying to write quality code, you write, uh, you are writing testing, and you are trying to do everything correctly. And uh, this method um, avoids all this. Um, uh, workarounds in code and so on. And often uh, I need to find out, uh, mm, move on. Uh, uh, communication. So I was thinking of myself as an introvert person and I like to sit in a corner uh, with my computer and uh, when nobody interacts with me, uh, only me and my code. Uh, that's uh, why it's so easy to write code for myself. But uh, when I'm getting uh, some task, uh, it's not really what I really do. Because from the uh, time when task was created to the time when I uh, take the task uh, in progress, uh, a lot of stuff could change. So I have to find that artist who created the task and uh, talk to him to really understand what he needs at this really moment when I'm uh, starting to uh, create a tool for him. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it looks it's, uh, uh, scary that I have to look at artist screens because uh, uh, you really didn't expect to see a lot of stuff there. But uh, you really, I really have to do this to understand how they work, not only with my tools, but how they work at all. For example, once I saw uh, artist is trying to remove um, uh, polygons. Do you see these stones there? Uh, in a polygons, polygons in those stones, like select, 
delete, repeat, select, delete, repeat. And I ask him like uh, how often he is doing this. And uh, of course it was very common task. So I wrote a tool for procedural uh, removing uh, in a polygons in uh, such stones. And uh, of course nobody used uh, that tool because uh, I will tell you why later. Um, but uh, there is, uh, the main goal is for all what I say that communication is never enough to understand why the art is doing it uh, st even, even after it have, uh, he have this tool and he is doing this as he get used to. I have to communicate with the uh, artist. Uh, another uh, thing, uh, uh, when uh, during COVID we went uh, offline and then um, uh, we did the same uh, because of a cruel Russian war against Ukraine. Uh, we work remotely and communication suffers even more when we, you work remotely. Um, of course, you can ask uh, artists to record uh, their screen so you can see how artists uh, uh, doing their stuff uh, even remotely. Uh, but, um, I, okay, I tell the, just another story. So I wrote a procedural generated, um, uh, I wrote a tool that procedurally generates all these uh, skins for weapons. Uh, and. Uh, um, artists use it, it was uh, like uh, weapons were shipped into the game, but then uh, they asked me to add a new type of uh, skin, so I added, uh, I sent a tool for feedback, and uh, they say like one parameter doesn't work. 